Hey guys, I'm Ivory and today I'm going to be doing a two-day wear test on the Catrice True Skin Hydrating Foundation. I'll be showing you how this applies initially as well as checking in throughout the day to show you how it wears. For anyone that's new here, I have oily and acne prone skin, so my wear tests are catered towards people with similar skin types. So if you find that this review is helpful, I will link up in the cards a playlist of all the other foundations I've done a review on. Before we begin, I do have a couple things to say. I do put timestamps in my description box, so if you want to skip to this part or any other part of this video, feel free to do so. I don't want anybody wasting their time here. So I I really don't care if you even just skip to the end to see my final thoughts. If that's really all you wanted to know out of this video, then just skip to that part. I really don't mind. So the first thing is I asked you on the community tab as well as Instagram what foundation I should try next. It was between this one and the Milani Cream to Powder Foundation. And if you checked what the votes were, it was pretty clear that the Milani one won. So why am I reviewing this foundation? Simply put, I am a liar, plain and simple. So I went to all the stores that I could, searching far and wide, trying to find the Milani foundation. On Ulta, you can only order it online, and all the colors that I could make work for me sold out. So what I had to do is I went on the official Milani website and I ordered it. Hopefully it's the right shade, oh my god. Shade matching online is just the absolute worst. I placed the order, but I do not know when it's arriving to me. So for all I know, it could take up to a week to get here. And I just didn't want to be sitting on my hands for the whole week. The show must go on, so I decided to pick up this foundation anyways but just know that I am a woman that is true to my word. The Milani one is coming and that will be the next foundation that I'm reviewing. And that's all I wanted to say. Let's get started. So I did go ahead and moisturize my face. I use Curology. I do usually use SPF. I use the one by Neutrogena, but I will admit it's greasy. I'm kind of just using it up. So I didn't put the SPF on my face because this is a new product and I didn't want that moisturizer to potentially ruin the longevity of this foundation. So I'm going to go ahead and do half my face with primer to see if it makes a difference. The one I'm using is the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. I always try Try to alternate the side that I use primer so in my last video I used this side because it has the mole on it so I'm gonna use the other side this time and as always I start in the center of my face and then move the product outwards and then on either side of my face I'm gonna go in with a brush and a sponge because I figure those are the two most common applicators to use for foundation the brush that I'm using is the Sigma multitasker which is the f47 and then the sponge that I'm using is actually a microfiber sponge by Juno and Co the foundation is a hydrating foundation with hyaluronic acid and watermelon seed oil that leaves a perfectly even skin tone and natural matte finish. It has medium to high coverage with a comfortable skin feeling. It is dermatologically approved. The product contains 1.01 fluid ounces and retails for $11. Uh oh, I'm bleeding. Ugh. Okay, so this is one layer. By the way, the shade I used was Neutral Toffee, which is 046. I feel like this is a pretty good shade. I did buy this at Ulta. I know on the Catrice website that there are more shades, but they don't have every single shade that they carry at Ulta. So this for me is the best shade match if you order it or buy it at Ulta. But I do feel like the undertone could be a little bit warmer, like more golden. And I know that Catrice, the official website, has a better undertone online, but it's not going to be at the Ulta store. Because for me, I was that this is a great shade match like I wouldn't go lighter or darker but just the undertone could be improved they said that this is a natural matte um okay yeah I can see that it's a little bit more matte than it is natural thankfully for me I love both matte and hydrating foundations so it doesn't really matter the coverage wow nice solid medium you could still see my hyperpigmentation peeking through but it's mostly covered and over here i have a ton of acne and the skin over it is super dry you can even see i started bleeding a little bit so the blemish is open there's no scab over it ignoring this one though the other acne around it the skin over it is dry because it's scabbed and it's not clinging to it weird. It looks really good, which makes me really happy. As far as which applicator gives me more coverage, it's hard to say. I feel like they both give me the same amount of coverage. And also sometimes even if they give me the same amount of coverage, I still prefer the sponge because it just applies nicer. But on the brush side, it still looks really good. There's no like clinging streaky issues. I'm really liking how everything's looking. I'm gonna go ahead and add a second layer to see how it builds up, but I'm not gonna apply the foundation everywhere, only on the spots that I want to conceal a little bit more. Okay, so this is the second-ish layer. I really only spot concealed a couple areas. I also want to note that I only used two pumps. I put two pumps exactly on here. I used about one and a half coats for the first layer and then the remaining product to spot conceal on the second layer. So the fact that I'm able to get this type of coverage with only two pumps is wonderful. So this is going to go a long way. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward doing the rest of my face. All the products that I use will be listed in my description box below. All 
All right, now that everything is on, everything went on perfectly. When you get up close, oh my nose, it has so much shimmer from the fallout from, not the glitter, the, the shimmer underneath. I really should have done my eyes first, but I didn't know what look I was going for, and that was my bad, guys. But beside that, everything looks really good. I can't get over how good it looks over my acne. Everything looks just so nice and smooth, but of course, you know, if you have oily skin, first impressions, it means absolutely nothing. So I'm gonna be wearing this for 10 hours. I will check in around the halfway point to show you how it's wearing. Okay, it's been about five and a half hours now. I feel like I look pretty good. I'm a little bit shinier, and I'm gonna blot in a second, but overall, I really like how the foundation is wearing. There's just a couple areas where you see just minimal wear and tear, for example, my chin, you could see it's starting to crack just a little bit. Not too bad though, in terms of severity from a scale from zero to 10, I give it like a, a two. You could see on my acne, it's laying really nicely. I haven't lost any coverage, it's not cracking. This is what I mean when I say the foundation is laying nicely over my acne. Of course, it's gonna be obvious that I still have acne and it'll never lay as nicely as say the rest of my face. This is about as good as it gets though when it doesn't lose its coverage and it's not cracking and it's not picking up on the dry skin on top of it and emphasizing it. This to me, it looks pretty good. I also see in my T-zone, there's a little bit of wear. You know, when you make facial expressions and the foundation settles in the lines and then you relax, you can kind of see the foundation has settled in those lines. It happened a little bit. It's it's really not a big deal. On my nose, I haven't lost any coverage. There's no splotchiness. In terms of primer versus no primer, I don't think there's a difference in terms of oiliness, but I do think that on the primer side, the primer is helping it not settle as much. I can see right here in the middle between my brows, even though I get those horizontal hash marks when the foundation settles they're less prominent on the primer side i can see the lines are not nearly as deep and there's not as much settling as the side without primer i can also just see it on my cheeks this side just looks a little bit more polished like it's laying just a little bit smoother than the no primer side so i do feel like the primer is making some sort of difference in terms of how it's wearing but in terms of oiliness i think they look pretty much the same before i blot someone did ask me if i could touch the foundation to see if there's transfer and there's very minimal transfer. I touched right here where I didn't set my foundation. On days where I know I'm not gonna be leaving the house and I'm not gonna be wearing a mask, I only set the areas that I have concealer everywhere else. I just leave it be. And then places like where my blush and my bronzer is, I set it with my bronzer and my blush because they are powders. So that way I don't have to go in with both a translucent powder and then a blush or bronzer on top of it. I just go in straight with a bronzer or blush right on top of my unset foundation. But I'm gonna go ahead and blot. The ones I'm using are discontinued. So I will list the ones that I actually prefer in my description box below. And the reason why I've been blotting at the halfway point versus at the 10 hour mark is because when I blot, when I'm less oily, there's less transfer on the blotting sheets and I feel like in the long run, it wears a little bit better. So that would be my advice. Don't wait until you're super oily to blot. Wait somewhere in between four to six hours and then go ahead and touch up. And you'll notice that when you blot, it won't look as broken up or you won't have those missing patches of foundation. It holds together a lot better. Typically, that is. All right, so I went ahead and blotted. I don't know if that was the right move. I can see on my upper lip, I'm getting those dots and the dots are where my hair would grow, but I shaved yesterday and I can see those little dots of missing foundation. And also now that I blotted, the acne is starting to crack. It just makes my acne look a little bit drier. So I would just be careful about blotting with this one because I don't love it, but I know I'm gonna get oily again in an hour or two. So I think when my oils come in, it's gonna remedy a lot of the dry, weird issues that I'm having with my skin right now. But I will check in at the 10 hour mark to give you my final thoughts on day one. Okay, so it's a little over 10 hours now. There are a couple areas that are less than perfect and I will zoom in in a second. But as a whole, I feel like this looks pretty good. It's holding together pretty well after I blotted. It doesn't look overly greasy. Definitely, you know, there's some dewage happening. Did I say dewage? I meant dewiness. You know what I meant. Me and you, we, we get each other. But I feel like I don't look too shiny. And in fact, if I had to choose between blotting and not blotting, I would be fine not blotting or touching up. So the areas that I'm a little concerned about are my chin and my upper lip, like I told you. The blotting just made all these little holes where my hair would grow back up here. So there's just little dots of foundation missing. And even though my oils have come in and it helped a little bit, I can still sort of see the missing foundation holes. And also the cracking on my chin isn't too bad, but the foundation, the way it's on my acne, you can see that it did crack. That happened after I blotted and I can still see it. I just feel like maybe blotting wasn't the best thing to do because I wasn't getting any cracking. It was just a little bit shiny. So it's kind of a trade-off when you blot. Yes, you'll be less shiny, but it might not look as nice versus not blotting and everything looks a little bit better, but you're shiny. So you have to figure out which one is the lesser of two evils. My nose actually looks pretty good. I did lose a little bit of coverage when I blotted on the sides of my nose. Very, very minimal. But the top of my nose, no coverage has been lost. There's no 
breaking up whatsoever. It's just a little bit shiny, but other than that, it looks pretty much perfect. In my T-zone, you can see a little bit of wear and tear, but it doesn't look like it's any worse than at the halfway point. And as far as it's settling into my fine line, so you guys know I have a forehead wrinkle here and it often creases right here. It's pretty faint. I mean, yeah, you can see the line, but it's not too bad. And same thing right here, it often settles in the smile line and it is small and faint. Honestly though, this is nothing. This is super common. I often see a faint line even with my best foundations. I'm not worried about this at all. As far as primer versus no primer, reiterating what I said at the five hour mark, I feel like in terms of oil, I feel like both sides look about the same, but I still feel like the primer helped the foundation not settle as much. The only area where I can really see the difference is my T-zone. It just looks like it's settled a little bit better on the primer side. Everywhere else, I feel like the wear on either side is pretty much the same. So I think primer made a little bit of a difference but it's debatable. To wrap up my thoughts on day one, I feel like a sponge or a brush will give you the same amount of coverage and they will look pretty much exactly the same. So I don't really think that one applicator is better than the other for this foundation at least. Primer seems to make a minimal difference in terms of the wear of it, but in terms of oiliness, not so much. I definitely have some thoughts right now, but I wanna save it to the end because this video is gonna be long enough as it is. So to avoid redundancy, all my thoughts will be at the end of this video. That is it for day one, see you tomorrow. All right, it is day two. I went ahead and did my eyes off of camera just to avoid that fallout situation again. Again, I have already moisturized, so I am gonna go in with the same primer that I used yesterday on my entire face since I did feel like it did make a little bit of a difference. I'd love to know what types of primers you guys really like that actually stand by because for me, primer is just one of those things that I overlook, like I, I could do with without it, I don't care. But maybe it's because I just haven't found the right primer for me. So I'd love to know what your favorite primers are, especially if they're affordable. And of course they have to be cruelty free. I'm also gonna be adding loose powder underneath my foundation, only on half of my face. Adding loose powder when you have oily skin is a great hack to help prolong your oils from coming through, but it can also help the foundation stay together better. So if you have a problem with either getting oily too fast or your foundation is just not wearing well and it's like cracking on you, I would highly recommend powdering underneath. So what I like to do is I like to take my puff. This one is by Tati Beauty and the loose setting powder that I use is by Dermablend. This one's my favorite one to use underneath my foundation. I say this all the time, but the type of powder you use and how much you use does matter. If you use too much or you use a powder that is not super finely milled, when your foundation goes on top of it, it won't look as good. It will look lumpy. And I make a point to really press it, especially in the center of my face. Sometimes I do the outside of my face, but for me, I feel like foundation lasts a decent amount of time on the outside. So if your only concern is the center of your face, then only focus it on the center. And then to apply the foundation, I'm gonna use my Juno & Co sponge. Even though the brush worked fine, I am used to using a sponge. I'm gonna put two pumps again. Okay, so this is one layer of the foundation. I think I'm gonna leave it as is. I think the coverage is so good. Yesterday I said it was medium, but I think it's more medium full. I don't know what I was thinking when I said that. Sometimes I say things and then I look back in the footage and I feel like I'm wrong, so I'm correcting myself right now. I feel like this on a first coat is medium full on me. I also wanna note that even though I moisturized right here on my nose, I saw dry skin around here and as I put on the foundation, it was able to cover it. You know how sometimes foundation will go over your dry skin and it looks like tissue paper and it emphasizes how flaky your skin is. That did not happen here. No, no, it actually covered it. That's awesome. But I'm quickly gonna do the rest of my makeup. All the products that I'm using are the same as day one. Okay, so all my makeup is on just like yesterday. Everything went on totally normal. I don't have too much to add or even zoom into right now because everything looks flawless. So that is it for now. I will check in at the halfway point again to show you how it's holding up. All right, we are five hours in. I think today's going even better than yesterday. Yesterday, I felt like I was a little bit shiny at this point. And today I feel like I'm not as oily. In fact, I think I look better now than I did when I first put on my makeup today. It just looks so good. And my oils have incorporated so nicely into this foundation. On my chin area, I see just a little bit of cracking but it's all still staying together and the coverage hasn't been lost over my acne you can see over my acne like this one over here where it's a little bit dry you can see that it's a little dry but it doesn't emphasize the dryness so this I would say is good on my upper lip it's looking really good granted I didn't blot like I did yesterday so we'll have to see at the 10 hour mark how this is gonna look but right now it's looking pretty good in between my eyebrows it looks all right I would say out of my entire face this is probably where it looks the worst and it doesn't even really look that bad I mean I can see a little bit of cracking 
looking. I would say it looks okay. Not perfect, but still pretty good. I'll come back at the 10 hour mark to give you my final thoughts. We have finally reached 10 hours. Even though I'm a little shinier than I would like, I would be okay not blotting. Like this still looks really good. And both sides have primer, but this is the side with powder. I'm having a really hard time noticing if there's a difference between the two sides. They look pretty neck and neck. So I don't think that powdering underneath made a huge significant difference underneath. But of course I encourage you to try it if you want to see if it makes a difference for yourself. But for me, it made little to no difference. As a whole, I really like the way this looks. There are a couple areas I'm gonna zoom into that are a little bit less than perfect. I mean, you can see on my chin that it's cracking and I've had acne on my chin for so long that I don't know if the cracking is because of my acne or if it's because the chin naturally cracks like this because it's not a completely smooth surface such as my cheeks. It could be a combination of the two for all I know, but I did wanna point out that there is a little bit of cracking going on, but I have not lost any coverage. And even though it's cracking, it's not separating. On my nose, I feel like that's where I'm the oiliest right now. It's settling a little bit into the sides of my nose. It's looking a little greasy. So it's a little bit oilier here than I would like, but again, staying together. I would say that my T-zone shows the most wear. You can see the horizontal lines where the foundation settled into my lines. I would say this area brings down the average of this foundation because everywhere else looks either great or good. But everywhere else, you can see that it didn't settle into my fine line still, even 10 hours later. And even though in the center of my face, it's noticeable that there's a little bit of wear and tear, I still think it held together really well. If I had to rate this foundation, I'd say it's like a B plus, maybe an 87. Let's just talk about the pros and the cons. Pros are that it gives really good coverage, especially on, this is one layer of foundation. And my acne down here is not easy to cover. Usually foundation will wear off quite quickly and it's holding on really well. It doesn't really settle into my fine lines. I would say that this is acne skin friendly. This is pretty oily skin friendly. I really like the finish of it. I just, I think it looks really beautiful. And also on both days, the foundation wore pretty well on me. So it's pretty consistent with me. I always get a little bit iffy or confused if I have one bad day and then one good day because then it's just not consistent. But I feel like on both days, it wore pretty well for me. The things I'm a little bit wary of is touching up. Yesterday when I touched up, it did make my skin look really dry and it looked more textured. So I would just be wary of that because when I did touch it up, I kind of regretted it. I actually preferred looking a little bit oilier and the makeup looked a little bit better and less worn down versus I'm matte again, but it just doesn't look as nice. But of course that's my experience. It could be totally different for you. The other thing that brings it down is the T-zone. I would say on my cheeks and my forehead, it looks great. On my chin and my nose, it looks good. And then on my T-zone, it just looks Okay, I don't know, maybe I'm being a little bit picky. Maybe I can just buff this out with my fingers. Uh, does it look better? I don't know. I just feel like it looks a little cakey here. And this is one layer. And it's so frustrating because that's the only area that this foundation isn't wearing that well with. But overall, I really like this. I would recommend you go out and try it. Definitely the good outweighs the bad in this case. I was very pleasantly surprised with this one. But that is it for this video. I hope that it was helpful, insightful. And if it was, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and feel free to comment down below what other foundations you'd like to see me review. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing I would love to see you come back. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one.